You're welcome back. This is Still Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. In a ceremony held in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria, the governorship candidate of Boot Party, Olawale Oluo, disclosed that he had a sh to shelve his ambition to support the Labour Party presidential candidate to win Saturday's presidential poll for the greater interest of Nigeria and Nigerians. Ahead of Saturday's presidential and national assembly elections, the Boot Party had formed an alliance with the Labour Party in the presidential and governorship elections. And that alliance of his party with the Labour Party, according to Oluo, was facilitated by Pa Ayo Adebanjo, leader of the Yoruba social political group Afenifere. The party also adopted the governorship candidate of Lego, Labour Party in Lagos State, Badebo Roots Vivo as its candidate, while the State House of Assembly candidates will be harmonized. Well, joining us to discuss this is Mr. Olawale Oluwo himself, the governorship candidate of Boot Party. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you very much, presenter. Okay. First of all, you were in the APC, and in fact, we know that you were the commission, a commissioner in the Ambode administration. What changed your mind to leave the party for something else? Okay, I think uh, basically it was because of lack of internal democracy in the party. If you remember, I participated in the APC primary election mm. with Governor Sonwulu and one other person, Mr. Mustafa. But a lot of things happened. Some, some things you could call government magic. So we find a situation where three aspirants have applied for the position. They have paid for the forms. They've been cleared. And you, you ended up having a sole candidate on the day of the primary election. So a lot of wrong things happened in that, during that process. And I, I wouldn't lend my name to such. So I left the party because it's my democratic right to leave. If you can voluntarily enter, you can voluntarily exit. So that's why I went to the good party. But I've always known that no matter what you do in Lagos, the opposition cannot afford to split votes because we are dealing with a formidable foe. Uh, let me not call them foe. I'll say we are dealing with a formidable adversary, and that adversary has been in government for about 24 years. So it's not the kind of adversary you go into an election with and you start to, to, to split your votes in different directions. So I made that determination that the right thing to do for Lagos, if Lagos is going to be free, is to join forces with comrades who have the same ideology and the same vision as I have. And where there are differences of vision, we can harmonize and come to, 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 to a consolidated approach in terms of agenda, in terms of manifesto, and we can drive the strategy and win the state. That is what this is about. Okay, before we go to specifics on uh, what kind of ideology that Labour Party and Boot Party share uh, together, uh, I'd like to know, is it not part of uh, internal democracy to have a consensus candidate? Because you said on the day of election, uh, one candidate alone was remaining. I just wanted to understand that. Was that not a consensus can candidate? Or no, it was not a consensus. It was a fraudulent process. How so? It was a fraudulent process to the extent that to have a consensus, the three candidates must come together and agree that this is the person that all of us will um, support. We even had a situation where all the ballot papers that were taken to the Unicorn Stadium that day, they were pre-printed. So, Governor Son Lu's name were printed on all of them. So it was not a primary election. It was just a charade that no serious Democrats should be part of. Mm. And, and we have the evidence. We have the facts to, to support that. Okay, so uh, if there are evidences, why didn't you take it up somewhere else, like uh, legally, to fight it? Was that not allowed? There is no, <laughs> there is no need for that. Look, okay. the nomination process has a short period to, to, to the end of it, okay. going by the next timetable. So if you go to court on the basis of the irregularities in your own party, you might be in court while the nomination process will close, and even if you still lose the case in the court, you would have closed all the alternative windows available to you. So sometimes you just let it go because your focus is very clear. It is to free Lagos, and the best way to achieve that is either to go it alone, and when you get to the field and you discover that you can't go it alone, then you must now come together with other like minds, and then you create a formidable 
um, opposition. And the opposition must be such that the electorates will have a limited option to choose from. Because when we started, we had a five-way race, which was APC, PDP, Boot Party, Labour Party, and ADC. I was not comfortable with that. I wanted a two- or three-way race. So I joined forces with the Labour Party in order to make it a three-way race, which was achieved. Before we went for the presidential election, we had the three-way race, basically. But by the time we came back from the presidential election, the electorates themselves streamlined it into a two-way race. Mm. So what you have now is a Labour Party that is contesting with the APC, the ruling party. Okay, you, from all the parties that were available to you, you chose Labour Party. You say because you have like minds. would like to know some of these things that marked Labour Party out that were some of your ideologies as well so that we know why that marriage was very easy for you. Well, three things happened. Number one, a lot of us did not see a big coming. That is why I went for the Boot Party because I wanted a political party structure that would be available for all comrades who are interested in this battle to free Lagos that all of us can use so that that platform is not tainted, that platform is not penetrated by the ruling party, because I know that's their strength. As long as they can penetrate your platform and then compromise the entire structure, you are not likely going to be able to win with that platform. So I brought the boot party for the Lagos struggle. I didn't see a big coming. I didn't see labor coming. So that is why we had that initial fight we race. But with respect to the similarities between my Boots Party and the Labour Party, is the fact that both parties are centre-left parties. We are centre of the left. We are not extreme left. We are not extreme right. We are not extreme right. We are centre-left party. So it means that we believe in the concept of capitalism to create the wealth, and then we believe in welfareism to be able to distribute the wealth that is created in a way that nobody is left behind. That is what center left is about. So all the concepts of welfareism, so the concept of welfareism, the concept of making sure um, the working class can have access to the wealth that they have created, those are the things that makes ourselves and Labour Party to be in this alliance. It was something that was well thought out. That is the first one. The second one was that the man Obi, when he came out, there was a sincerity about him. So we could also have the confidence that at the national level, we were going into a We seem to have lost the audience. Okay. That was kind of um, relationship. And then the third thing is the fact that for Labour Party in Lagos, the governorship candidates and the deputy governorship candidates in the person of um, Gwadibo Rosvaibo and Princess Oyefusi, we have been meeting in the last four to five years. If I've not had meetings with Gwadibo before the alliance, we must have had meetings over 50 times. Just discussing how to free Lagos, how to free our people, and how to take our states to the level that we desire. So there was a strategic fit, and it is that fit that we leverage on to bring about this alliance. And this alliance has proven to be a very competitive alliance, and we believe with this platform we can win this election. Okay, you keep saying free Lagos. Free Lagos from what exactly? Because free you, Lagos from the APC. What did they do? Because you were part of this government, and what did they actually do, or what are they actually doing that Lagos needs to be freed from? Yes, I was part of them to work with to work for Governor Ambody. And Ambody was doing the work, and at the time, the, uh, going forward, the PC was not seeing it as something that should continue to do the work for the people. Rather, a lot of interests were being played out. And I know it had to do with the presidential ambition. I respect that. I don't have any problem with that. But at that point, somebody was performing. And I thought if it was about performance, which we were doing very well, and about the people who were getting the dividends of democracy, yes, I would be part of that. Even if PDP transforms in, in Lagos into that, I would join them. Anything that, that would benefit at 
it's no longer about the people, it's no longer about performance, it's no longer about the dividend of democracy and all that, then you can take your excuse. There's nothing that ties you to any part. So now that um, you are joining forces, or you have joined forces with the Labour Party, how do you intend to superintend over the state Lagos uh, as two parties? Or are you now just one party yeah. and there's no longer anything like boot party? There's still boot party, but um, with respect to Lagos, it's Labour Party that we're all working for. So there won't be a time in the future that uh, people from the boot party will now begin to say we are being marginalized or that. Have you worked out the modalities on how to uh, govern this state together? What role will you be playing? No, no, those, those will be very presumptuous. You know when you go into this kind of alliance, and if you are going into it in good faith, you are not going to start to make it look like a deal. Mm. That's what typical politicians do. I'm not a typical politician. I have never been. I've been a man in the corporate world. I'm an investment banker. I'm a capital market operator. I'm, an, I'm a chartered accountant and all that. We don't approach public sector activities like that. So what you want to do is to say, do you believe in the philosophy of what you are doing? Can you create a value proposition that the people can uh, associate with, something that resonates with them, and that can be the basis upon which you earn their votes? You earn their votes. It is when you have um, won the election that you now begin to sit down and say, who has this capacity? Mm -hmm. Who has these capabilities? And then you begin to see how government will be formed based on people's capacity, capabilities, competence, and all those things that Peter Obi normally talks about. I believe in them. Mm -hmm. But when you start saying, you sit down, you take 30%, 30%, 30%, then that's a deal. All this should not be a deal. All this should be about service. Okay. Now, let's just have a dream, your dream of Lagos State, if you do win the, the governorship election on Saturday. What is the Lagos State that we are looking at if Labour Party should clinch the, uh, the throne, as it were? I'll summarize it um, very quickly. The Lagos State we want is a Lagos State where people can sleep in the night and they feel safe. That's security. It's also a Lagos state where people can wake up in the morning and they have somewhere to go or a business to do or a venture to pursue. You have situations where a lot of young people are just milling around, um, uh, clustering in different streets. Even in front of my office, I see people cluster every day. There's nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. So I wonder how those guys plan their lives, how they how they think of where the next meal will come. So people want to sleep and sleep with their eyes closed because there's security. People want to wake up and have somewhere to go and how to earn revenue. People want to leave their homes and not be in excruciating traffic. People want to be able to send their kids to good schools and when they are healed, they want to be able to go to hospitals that can take good care of these things that labor is talking about and with respect to how we will deal with the traffic situation it's going to be medium uh, uh, short medium and long term uh, approaches number one the short term one is that as much as possible we extend the brt lane to so many so many lanes because that brt lane in the first rules or for those alignments that don't have railways because once you build the railway that might take you three years uh, three years, four years, five years. The traffic, the people in traffic are not going to wait for that. So we must quickly expand the BRT lanes to almost all the available roads that we can get space to extend them to. And that will bring immediate support. All the bottlenecks will break them down. Governor Sonolu promised us to take care of the bottlenecks. I've not seen much work in that regard. So for me, with respect to the health sector, we have a very good plan. So that's what this is about. This is about where Lagos was when this governor took over and where Lagos is today. I will be better off. A lot of folks have, had, have asked in this Lagos. They don't seem to say they are better off. Mm. Uh, let's just, let's just have a brief, 
Let's just as briefly as possible uh, round off uh, on, on, this, on this note. Lagos has been administered for the past 24 years by a particular group of people. Call it a party, call it some godfathers, call it the establishment, whatever name you want to give it. How do you intend to succeed breaking away totally from this establishment that has run Lagos for this long? I don't know what you mean by breaking away. Look, when you go into the elections and we win, the thing has broken itself. We don't need any process to break it again. A lot of things will change immediately. Number one, any government that comes in that is not actually installed will immediately cancel the alphabet. Most likely on the day of inauguration. That one is without thinking. Any government that is not installed by Ashwaji in Lagos will immediately cancel that, um, what do they call it now? That uh, Apex body of the APC. I forgot to think that name now. Um, the one that takes the decision for Lagos. I don't know if you can remember, but whatever their name is, it will not happen again. A lot of concessions that are not consistent with the process and the rule of law will be cancelled. So it's a political party. When a new political party takes over, the old order is swept away and a new order is installed. And sometimes, so really some, sometimes old order, jettisoning the old order and taking the new order gives us concern because no matter what party it is, there should be some kind of continuity. Whether Alpha Beta is owned by Tinubu, What do you mean by continuity? Let me, let me just learn. Whether Alpha Beta is owned by an APC stalwart or not, is yes. it doing the right, the good, a good thing for Lagos or is it just because it is being owned by the APC or a stalwart in APC that is going to be jettisoned? We need to know why some things will be left and others taken, new things taken. No, because no, it I, shouldn't just be because you are fighting. I, so let us know the alternatives that you will have to either Alpha Beta <laughs> or any other thing that you want to jettison. Just briefly, please. No, let me tell you. Let, let me tell you this very quickly. Alpha Beta is not doing any work. That's the truth. They don't collect the revenues. Okay. The revenues are being collected by the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, LIRS. So Alpha Beta must have been an SPB. Probably they have some computer support that they are giving. The LRS collects the money. That is sufficient for us. Because Alphabeta is a consulting uh, company. You cannot be a consultant forever. There cannot be permanent consulting. Everything must have an exit date. That is what I'm saying. You don't need any extra platform when you have a government platform that is being paid every month to collect the, the revenues for government. Okay. And so we're not just saying, let's stop Alphabeta. No, 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 no. Okay. We're saying let's stop Alpha Beta because Alpha Beta is a preference of the APC. Okay. If another party comes, we, we will not we understand install that another now. replacement of Alpha Beta. We just leave it for the LRS to do their job. We understand that now. I, I just don't want to uh, lose sight of this question that I'm going to ask you as the final question. It was alleged that you were attacked. You said so yourself. Can you give us an insight into what really happened? And, and then after that, you talk to Lagosians. Just briefly, let's, let's wrap up. Okay, this is what happened. Um, so, to do our primaries, we've done it in uh, Limoshua and a few other places in Lagos. So, um, we contacted the KBAC of the town, the Ology of Fekpe, that will be coming the next day. And he said he will not host us in his palace, but that we are free to do our campaigns, there will be nobody disturbing us. But the kind of almost like 50, 60 vehicles, and prior to that, we had already concluded the deal between the APC and Labour Party that, are, that made the PIP, as APC, between the PDP and Labour Party that that uh, culminated in the lapse of the pdp structure in okay the total strength has strengthened the the opposition platform without announcing so that rally itself was the announcement of that um collapsing of the pdp structure into the labor party so that's what some of the pc folks could not undo on that day and they responded violently i would say because there were gunshots um myself and the honorable honorable nohin who is the House of Reps candidate for PDP in a federal constituency? Two guys with guns aimed at each of us and opened fire. Two bullets were targeted at me, about two at uh, Honorable Noim. But thank God for my for my security security detail who responded. The bullet missed narrowly. So I heard what the police spokesman 
purportedly said, I will not confirm whether it was the one that said that really, to say that there's no evidence of somebody wounded or a dead body or stuff like that. But <laughs> we did, I didn't report that if the bullets hit me, so you are not going to see a wounded part of my body, but the bullet missed. And it was not only that, twice they tried to disrupt our rally. At Eridu, they tried to disrupt our rally. At Itapu, they tried to disturb our, uh, to disrupt our rally. So what I've seen in Ekwe is that political intolerance that has been building before now, and it has gotten to the to the crescendo. So it is important that the security agencies in their planning should know that Ekwe is going to be a very hot spot because we are going to be very competitive there, and we are going to stand for our rights and fight for our rights. So as so it stands now in Ekwe. As it stands now in a where PDP is now Labour Party, is that what you're saying? Yes, it's a two way race. And that is how we are cascading it all over Lagos. You see that by Thursday or Friday morning, we would have cascaded almost all the local governments to make it a clear two way race. Hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Oluo, for, for the insight you've given us and everything you have said today. It's been a pleasure having you on the program today. Thank you, my friends. Just take a final word for Lagosians because Saturday is coming. It's fast approaching. In fact, it's here, just in a sentence or two or in 30 seconds. No, no, this is what I'll tell Lagosians. We want a peaceful election. We want a non-violent election. I know the youths are agitated. I want to appeal to them. Fighting will undermine the election. Responding to violence with violence will also undermine the election. So what I, will, what I will expect them to do is go in large numbers to the polling booths, go and vote for your preferred party, but protect yourself because the law allows you to defend yourself. If there's somebody who is aggressive, if you can use reasonable force to contain the person and restrain the person and hand the person over to the police, that's how it should be. But it's not good to just wait and let people kill you. You must defend yourself. And then for the security agencies, my plea to them is, let there be good security presence. Let there be sure of force so that these bad guys who are merchants of violence, they will know there is no place for them in Lagos uh, elections come Saturday. All right. Thank you so much again, uh, Mr. Olowo, for coming on the program. Thank you, my friends. Well, we've been talking with Mr. Olawale Oluwo, uh, who used to be a candidate for Boot Party, but now he has just confirmed to us that Boot Party has collapsed its structures even before the presidential election into Labour Party, and they are going into the polls as one united body. It was a pleasure talking with him, and that is how it's been on Plus Politics today. We thank you so much for being a part of it. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. On behalf of the team, saying thanks for being there.